Hi, my name is Ian Klosowiak, CTO of Close Guitars. And I'm Russ Hodges, a local player here in Salt Lake City area. Awesome. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of a Q&A about the bass guitars. And yeah, start with the first question. Yeah, I'm really kind of curious. Why would you be crazy enough to go from this acoustic landscape, which you guys are well cemented in, and move into electrics, in particular with the bass guitar? Yeah, so uh, we've been making acoustic guitars for almost eight years now. Started out with the travel guitar, then did the full-size um, dreadnought, and then we did ukuleles. Um, and so, yeah, we it was like growing up, I played more electric guitar than acoustic, actually. So it was always in the back of my mind, um, just coming up with the designs for the electric guitar. And it was really just a matter of time before we decided to, to do it. And I started putting my ideas into, into prototypes. And you actually were one of the first bass players to play our prototype. And really funny story, we made the prototype body out of two by fours because we uh, didn't have time to, it was right before the NAMM show, yeah. I think two, two or three years ago, two years ago, right before the NAMM show, two and a half years ago. And we were in a rush. We had our CNC program barely working. And yeah, that was the beginning of the vision, but went from prototype to now, two years later, we've got finished line of electric guitars and basses and they're working out great. Yeah, and, and at the time I gave you a brutally honest opinion of what I thought of the, the prototype that the carbon fiber was nice, right? And um, talk about the distance you've traveled from that two by four hammered together to what, what you have in your hands now. Yeah, so um, it was actually, you know, I'm, I'm very thorough and, and probably overly thorough in, in the decisions I make when I'm designing these instruments. Um, I analyze tons of different instruments, play them for hours, feel what I like, what I don't like, compare, um, and agonize about <laughs> the different design aspects and, and then come to a final decision, prototype it, and then feel it out, change it if I need to, and redo that whole process. And so the final design we have is just something that I'm extremely proud of um, as being the head designer, but also, you know, it wasn't just me designing this. I've talked to so many people, um, our employees who are, you know, people on our team in in the shop building instruments and also gu guitar players, bass players, and kind of a combination. One thing that is really key in, in this design is we wanted something different than what everyone else does, but still feel familiar and very comfortable. Yeah, it, it definitely has the, the feel of a familiar instrument. Uh, of course, it has a, a very modern tone profile, uh, which is uh, due to the carbon fiber. But I also think the passive is uh, quite an achievement to have in-house pickups and get some of the warmth and definition that you get out of those pickups as well. So I think they're both really well thought out. Uh, how long did it take you to sort of decide on going with an active bass, with the Pro Series, and with an in-house uh, uh, wired uh, pickup? Yeah, so um, one of the biggest challenges with bass players is they're so picky and they each want something different. And so building, designing a bass that would appeal to a lot of different styles of players, different preferences, and you know all of that was really difficult. So what, you know, coming from a manufacturing and engineering perspective, I wanted to comp like make a combination of, you know, kind of a little bit of best of all worlds. So one of the coolest features with this with this bass is the pick guard is fully loaded. And so therefore all of the wiring is in the pick guard. And so um, if someone wants a custom set of pickups or different knob configuration, you know, two EQ or three EQ or, or two switches, whatever, we can very easily do that. Um, the way we manufacture these is we have 
we work on individual parts, and then when a customer orders a base, um, within one, two days, we take all the parts and assemble it into the final instrument. So we have the necks ready, leveled, and beautiful and ready to go. We've got the bodies um, CNC'd and ready to go. We've got the pick guards, um, some of the standard ones, um, ready to go. We make them in batches and so that when someone orders a guitar, we take all those individual parts, um, say it's a custom order, they want, you know, a blue body or or an ash body or, um, you know, whatever. Better, you know, custom machine heads or whatever. We, we take those parts and we put them together and then we build that custom instrument for that customer. That way we can get those preferences um, that a customer wants without having to have huge inventory and huge costs associated with that inventory. So your philosophy really does sort of include a jack of all trades that can meet somebody where they live as a player and the preferences that they have. You can take your design and make it flexible enough for each and every player. Yeah, exactly. So that's great. Yeah, and um, pretty soon we're going to be coming out with the five string bass. And so same same kind of story. We're going to be able to customize a lot of features and um, and that way a customer can get exactly what they want without paying the full custom shop um, pricing, you know. Right. Is it fair to say you're kind of like this nice medium cross between or a hybrid between a custom shop and a, uh, a large manufacturer that you're able to sort of have a hybrid concept of those two entities coming into one umbrella. Would that be a fair assessment? Yeah, that's definitely definitely what we're going for. Right. Um, we want every customer to feel like they're getting the attention they want that they should be getting. Because uh, in the end, when you're a bass player, a guitar player, you spend hours, hours playing. And every tiny feature needs to feel comfortable and needs to be exactly what you want. Acoustic players are finicky, right? They're picky about their choices. And it seems like you guys have uh, sort of cemented yourself into that market. Do you anticipate that the bass is going to be much the same way, that uh, getting it into players' hands, getting it, getting it heard and felt is a real key component uh, for you guys um, to make inroads into a market that is picky and finicky a lot like acoustics? So I think for us, the challenge... Um, the challenge is the upfront challenge of just getting it in people's hands. But I think once, once we do get it in their hands, it really does sell itself. And, um, and that, I think that's the beautiful thing about being part of a company, being part of a brand where the product itself speaks, um, speaks the story, you know, you can feel the quality and you can hear the quality. And I think that goes a long way. And I feel like you guys aren't trying to hide anything. Uh, help me understand your return policy. Somebody grabs it, they're excited to get it. It's not their cup of tea. What recourse do they have? Uh, you know, we, we, don't want, we don't want people to be playing an instrument that they don't want. And so even though our return rate is, is extremely low, our customers usually are very happy with it. Occasionally we do have some returns and that's okay. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, buying, buying a bass online that they've never held in their hands uh, is, you know, between 14 and, you know, $1,400 and $2,000, like that is a little bit of a risk. And so to mitigate that risk, we have a great return policy of great customer service. Um, if you have questions about the instruments, you can call, call us and chat with us. And so, you know, that's, that's the best way to go. Um, we do have a lot of stores that carry our instruments and, for some people, they have to play it first before they buy. And so going to a store, talking to one of our dealers, um, you could even custom order from the dealer through us. And so that way we'd ship it to the store. And it's a great combination of working with dealers and, and, and buying online. Can we go over some of the design cues of the instrument as well? This design was really intended to be, to have top performance. And performance was the number one um, design factor in this design. We didn't want to go quite headless because headless has a lot of really positive factors and features. Um, you know, it's lighter weight. There's no head, you know, neck dive, and 
more balanced body. So going from a big headstock to headless, we went kind of in between. And so having this smaller head headstock was key. The reasons why it's so important is when the machine heads are closer to the body, they have less leverage. That's one key factor. The headstock being smaller uses less materials, being less heavy. So those are two, two key things that create less head neck dive. And when you're playing for hours, like your shoulders get sore, you have to move your strap around, you feel that you know there's more weight on one side than the other. In those moments, you don't care about the way your headstock looks. You're uncomfortable, you know? So having that comfort, having that performance, um, in our opinion, is more important than the looks. I think it looks beautiful. That's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I designed it. It's a very serious design aspect that is important to talk about and important to know. Um, some of the other key features are um, the headstock angle is 11 and a half degrees, um, which makes it a key, very important angle so that you don't have too much string tension on the nut, which causes tuning problems. Um, with, the, with the perfect angle, you don't have that issue. Also, you can see in uh, the video, the strings are almost straight when it comes to um, going from from the tuning machine to the actual neck and fretboard. So, okay, so balance is like the key ingredient to this headstock, right? Uh, is there any other design aspect that you feel is important? It, it, it looks to be a well thought out bolt construction. Uh, I like the step in the back for the the uh, the junction at the neck. Um, I think uh, bringing the profile in um, is a nice a nice feature. Um, um, is there anything else in the aspect of design that you'd like to go over on the instrument? Yeah, um, there there are actually a lot of features. Um, so kind of continuing with the neck. It is a bolt-on neck, and one of the coolest features of it being a bolt-on is you can detach the neck. So, you know, in general, comparing a bass guitar to a piano, like pianos aren't very portable. Bass guitars are naturally portable instruments, um, and so you take it places. You take it on trips. Um, if you're a gig musician, you take it with you on, you know, the airplane. So when you do need to take it apart, put in a suitcase, the neck comes off. We've got a separate neck sleeve that the neck goes into, and the, the actually gig bag folds up into a very nice one-part uh, design. It's extremely functional, extremely um, convenient. The follow-up to that: so are you saying they end up uh, the neck ends up side by side with the body, shortening the overall profile? Would this fit in an overhead or under a, an airplane? Seat? Yeah, uh, I I think it's really clever in consideration of people that do travel with their instruments, especially for work, because they really don't have a choice. Sometimes you can go to the airport, call somebody on a cell phone and say, come back uh, to where you dropped me off. I'm gonna give you my bass because I can't fly with it. I'm just not gonna practice. Professionals don't have that those options. Yeah. So yeah, and even though that, you know, this being a travel base is definitely not the primary design of this base. Right. But it has that practicality and being very easy to travel with. The carbon fiber neck in it in itself is extremely reliable and resilient to temperature or humidity changes. So that right away is, is definitely a, a great choice for traveling. And it being detachable and having the neck being neck being collapsible is is a second really, really practical um, practical solution. So I I I was on a flight and they wanted to charge me an extra hundred bucks for um, for my instrument. And I I said, could you give me five minutes? And within three minutes, I took the neck off yeah. and put the body in my backpack and then uh, in my gig bag and uh, put the neck in the neck sleeve and I was good to go. So um, it's extremely easy and you feel really comfortable because there's basically no risk when you take it apart. Mm -hmm. So another uh, feature I want to talk about with the design of the of the neck is the fretboard is a uh, composite material. It is made out of a paper epoxy type of material, very similar to ebony, but it is composite. So it's even more 
durable and resilient than ebony. Um, we've got the back of the neck has a heel that is the exact same thickness as the body, or sorry, as the neck itself. And the reason we do that is when you play in higher notes, um, the, the heel doesn't restrict your, your, your flow when you're playing. It's a natural transition. Up to yeah, you. it's a natural transition. And, you know, I love basses that are, you know, single piece basses. Um, and so building a bolt on that feels like a single piece bass was really important to me. And so having that thickness be the same is crucial. And as well as having this little cutaway right here in the back was pretty key, which uh, which makes it really easy to play higher. One of the reasons why we can make it the same thickness is because it is carbon fiber. With wood, you have to have a thicker heel because the screws have to have something to hold on to. Right. Where with carbon fiber, we have metal inserts in there, and so the thickness can be exactly the same throughout the whole length of the neck. So that was that was a pretty cool um, design feature that is subtle but makes a difference when when you're playing a lot. Um, we talked a little bit about the pick guard. The pick sure. guard is uh, is the outside shape is universal, and then we make custom pick guards for the different hole positions and, and knob configurations. So that's really cool. We can basically fit any type of pickup and, and knob configuration in this pick guard. And so someone can pay a small fee to upgrade to a custom pick guard if they so want to. Um, some of the other features are the body itself. So um, right here, we've got a belly cut that actually goes all the way to the top of the horn. And some people, you know, when they play, they play for a long time, kind of in this position. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people, and I hate it when guitars or basses have kind of dig into your chest. And so having that that cut, you know, makes a small difference in in comfort, and I think it's important. Uh, we've got a little bit of a cutaway right here, and we've got the horn a little bit shorter. The lower horn is a little bit shorter here, sure. um, which balances makes it easier to balance on your knee. And we've got the upper horn a little bit extended than most bass guitars because it allows the strap to put the bass in the right position when you're playing with a strap. And so that longer horn gives that balanced, balanced feel. Awesome. Ian, I appreciate you uh, taking me through the instrument. Um, it's been a pleasure to play it um, and check out both models. And thanks for inviting me to, to play them. And thanks for giving an explanation for some of the design aspects, even this one. Yeah. Right? I appreciate it. Yeah, we're, we're super excited about having these this design finally finished and making them in bulk. And so we're really excited that people like you are loving them and, and uh, getting more people to try them out. Thanks a lot.